Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled You Can Go Your Own Way from the Google Code Jam 2019 Qualification Contest. The problem states you have just entered the world's easiest maze. You start in the northwest cell of an n by n grid of unit cells, and you must reach the southeast cell. You have only two types of moves available, a unit move to the east and a unit move to the south. You can move into any cell, but you may not make a move that would cause you to leave the grid. You are excited to be the first in the world to solve the maze, but then you see footprints. Your rival, Labyrinth Lydia, has already solved the maze before you, using the same rules described above. As an original thinker, you do not want to reuse any of Lydia's moves, specifically if her path includes a unit move from some cell A to some adjacent cell B, your path cannot also include a move from A to B. However, in that case, it is okay for your path to visit A or visit B as long as you do not go from A to B. Please find such a path. In the following picture, Lydia's path is indicated in blue, and one possible valid path for you is indicated in orange. And we'll take a closer look at this uh, graph that's off to the right in a side. But let's take a look at the two test cases that uh, Google provided us with. So the first test case uh, has the following. It's just uh, two moves, south and then east. And then the second test case corresponds to the one that we just saw. So if we take a look at this visually, it looks as follows. Lydia's path is going south first and then east. And you can see here that there's only one valid path, and that's to go east and south, so basically the inverse. And if we take a look at uh, what we just saw before, you can see that Lydia's path here, it goes east, east, then three souths, then one east, then one south, then one east. And then it, it gives you an, uh, uh, a possible solution that involves not going through any of the same moves from any given cell A to any given cell B or an adjacent cell B. If you haven't solved this problem yet, pause the video. I'm going to go right into the explanation here because it's actually pretty straightforward. And the solution is that we can it actually lies right in our first test case. And it's just taking the inverse of the path that we're given. So anytime Lydia moves south, we go east and vice versa. And we can check this with the second test case, which uh, if we do the following, we end up with this. So you may not be sure that this is going to, um, in all cases, be uh, the correct solution. But if you draw out a couple of different test cases, you'll find that they always work. And if you go ahead and code it and submit it, you'll end up getting a uh, past solution. So. Uh, I'm sure there's a rigorous mathematical proof that um, you know shows why this worked, but I'm not going to jump into that here. I'm just going to go to the code solutions. So our first solution is in Java. Here we've done the very imperative way of solving this. Uh, so we are passing here a string buffer s, uh, which gives us the ability to mutate our string buffer because strings are immutable in Java. And we loop through each of the indexes in our string, and then we uh, set a local using the ternary operator by basically checking to see what the character at the index i is. If it's equal to e, we want our replacement character to be s, otherwise we want the replacement character to be e. And then after we do this, we just set the character at that corresponding index to c. So a very imperative way of solving it. Uh, moving on to the Python solution, here we can use the join method uh, with list, or not list comprehension, but a generator expression. Uh, to basically say that for each of our C's, our characters in our string S, we want to uh, turn that S into an E, otherwise turn the E into the S. Uh, so the equivalent of the ternary operator is this uh, expression where we have X if condition uh, else Y. Moving on to our C++ solution. Here we are using a string. We don't need to worry about using some sort of uh, parallel data structure uh, similar to the Java solution because uh, strings in C++ are mutable. So we can just pass this in by reference and we can make one call to the transform algorithm, uh, pass it the iterators uh, to the begin and the last pass, pass the last element uh, iterator. And then we're going to be mutating uh, the string itself. So we just pass it the begin iterator again. And the lambda here does a similar thing that our our ternary operator was doing in the Java solution. So just uh, for each character, return uh, either s if our character currently is equal to e, otherwise return e. And last but not least, our Haskell solution. Here we can solve this making use of the map function with a lambda uh, that is identical basically to the ones that we saw in all of the Java, C++, and Python solutions. Uh, so here this backslash um, 
and then parameter uh, with the parentheses. This is how you indicate a lambda. And then what is right of the arrow operator is what is evaluated. The last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for each of these solutions is going to be linear due to the fact that we are only ever looping or recursing over the length of the characters in our string. And there is one other thing to note, and that is that I have omitted all of the code that reads in the input and uh, outputs the result in the format that Google Code Jam requires, that being the case hash number colon uh, answer. So if you're interested in that for any one of these languages, uh, all of that code is included in uh, the code that I posted to GitHub. So the links for all of that is in the description down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.